my academic, academic knowledge as well as my market knowledge um, to help people find our table. <laughs> <laughs> Too. Hi, I'm Arnie Tunstall. I am the um, gallery director at the Myers School of Art. I'm also a graduate from that program as an undergraduate with a um, graphic design, art history, and photography uh, triple major. Idiot, it take too long. <laughs> um, and then a master's degree in photography. And um, but I've worked all my life in uh, museums and galleries. So I've worked for years at the Meyer Art Museum and before the Museum of Art Museum of Art Museum of Art Museum of Art Museum. So I always come at um, with one eye as a maker myself, because um, I know what it means to try to enter these things and get chosen um, and get kicked out, so I take this very seriously because I know how much it hurts. Um, so I'd love to wear a sort of multiple hats when I'm thinking and working as a curator. Okay, so, so everybody's coming from a very different background. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the surprises that you had, because while you were journeying, you didn't know the other's opinions. So once you were you know, sent the document, let alone walking into the gallery, seeing the show for the first time, what was your first impression and what are some surprises that you saw in films? And the three virtual works. Which is for me. I would say that I was I was kind of surprised where we uh, met met up. Um, I didn't know I would, like she said, we're during this Validating, you know, your kind of initial urges, um, but also surprised at the uh, diversity of where people were coming from. I found this a really kind of convergent time, uh, which is a first point of December, in that this seems like people are coming at what's going on in the world in a, in a really long. I think that it was isolated for so long that they got they dig into their own. Um, I, I don't think I was surprised by this because this has been my experience sort of coming out of COVID, but the way that works really came to life in person. Um, there were a few works in particular that were not my favorite, looking at them on the computer screen and then fell in love with them when I walked in the room and saw them in real life. And I expected that to happen, um, so I don't think I was surprised, but it just sort of reinforced the notion of um, how important it is to see work in person and um, some things you know thrive on the computer screen and they thrive in real life and some things don't translate as well um, and I think that was the case for a lot of the work um, in the show which so it was a pleasant surprise. The first show that I juried was um, there were three of us and um, the first juror said this was all in person with the pieces it wasn't online said I don't look at anything with words in it or dogs and so I, I, I didn't know how to take that. It was lucky there were two other people, but me and another person who were more sensitive. It was a high school art, it was a high, senior high school art show too. So it just, I, I'm always sensitive about bias and awareness of that. So I, I was happy when the, the big surprise for me was that piece, the, toilet, um, the paper towel roll. And when I saw that that was in, I, I thought we had a lot in common. <laughs> and not that it was a sense of humor, it just was a sensitivity about the way it was crafted and maybe the story behind it. Absolutely. So that's one of the things that I found really exciting about the show is that we have every medium, we have every size, um, from abstract to very traditional. Um, so with that, we're actually going to go ahead and move to questions from the audience. Now I will say just a little, just one little ground rule. Uh, we're not going to be discussing why a certain piece made it in or why a certain piece did not <coughs> make it in. But beyond that, um, the floor is all yours. If anybody wants to go ahead and hear your first question, raise your hand, be brave, and I'll come with a, a mic. Like, yeah. Score. We, I don't even think we could 
see an average square of this. Okay. It's kind of like a dating site for the dark. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, a, it was a five star rating system, and you could rate like on the half star. Um, and so we all did that over the same weekend, like the Friday to Sunday. Um, and then Julie was able to see the average of it. And, was and then once the, you, the pieces were selected, I imagine by whoever got the most votes from the judges. Did you negotiate together which pieces would receive awards? Or how did that come yes, we, we came in the night before the opening uh, to look at everything critically because uh, I've done this before and I'm trying to make decisions from initial not very eyes. Um, speaking as an artist myself, you know, like some things just don't translate to my eyes. I mean, like some issues just don't make a decision in my brain. And we came in like, you know, my eyes are keeping on that time. So we spent a long time here. disadvantage because they're being judged just on computer and not in real life because this show that you're saying everything that was chosen here was chosen by computer the awards were chosen when you saw them but they didn't even have a chance to get in the show and be seen in real life yeah, yeah I think so I I really try to take that kind of keep that in mind and you leverage my experience of having work online and then see it in person to kind of think through what that experience was like as I was looking at it on the computer screen. So I really tried to zoom in as much as I could to look at, you know, brush strokes or, and find details and give, give everything a fighting chance on a computer screen. Um, but ultimately, you're right, there's probably things that are wonderful in person that we never got to see. Now part of it is how they were presented online. Um, some of them had just not really good photographs of like an object or a painting. I think that really hobbled a few pieces because I really tried to look, I know I looked at everything and then went through and scored it. And the, um, the ones that were out of focus or maybe they were in focus and then they were sharpened. If they were edited by a program, that kind of stood out. That was more noticeable and then the quality of the work sometimes. Clear pictures, high resolution, because we couldn't, I, I don't think you could zoom in too much. Um, I used the like, the control plus yeah. thing on my computer screen, so it's a... Detail shots, I know some of you, they could submit a detail shot, right? That was, yeah. I know I spent more time with pieces that had detail shots. Is that what the, so the brush strokes come to? Is that what the detail shots? Mostly for three-dimensional works would have another view, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes. Um, <laughs> it's a very difficult process, and that's why um, Because you're looking at a lot of work and looking at it very closely and, and trying to uh, disassociate what you think about or what your favorite kind of artwork is and give the work its due um, if you're doing it you know, responsibly, uh, which takes a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> um, but it also takes, uh, uh, as someone who's looked at, um, especially working in the museum, right, and, and my job was to be the person who listed the collection of objects and you know, I had a reference for the thing. But we live in a digital world now. So that first digital gatekeeper is something that uh, a number of artists can't get past because they don't either have access to decent programmatic equipment or don't know how to represent themselves well. And it's something that a, a place like this uh, organization can do is teach people how to present themselves well because um, it, it matters. <coughs> but I couldn't find the paintbrushes on the large piece. So I know that that was one that um, surprised me when I saw it first. Yeah, I think it's a good topic. Yeah. And just to add a bit of context, and in no way making excuses, or just, but just to add context, we used to do physical journeying, oh, yeah. and we used to, <laughs> people are nodding and remembering, flashing back, and we used to shut down the barrier for two days, and it's, you know, like, 
one of the pieces of art were, were brought in here. So while it's not in a perfect process, unfortunately, it doesn't. <coughs> so I we were talking that. about that when we were before we started that there's advantages and disadvantages to online, and it's like which one is better. Is it great to get the pieces in front of you? Now that sounds nice, though. Yeah, I kind of like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have a good in the parade. And when we hold them up, and, and we, you know, it was this like long circle of people holding the artwork, and we all, we both put it in like 10 seconds. You know, you, you kind of. So, how many did you narrow it down to opportunities uh, online to in person? The 40 pieces out of 74 to 80% were. a lot of artists have stories behind uh, what they're presenting. Were you privy to that, that information, or are you just looking at the pieces? Yeah. And so we didn't get any backstory, any artist statement. We got titles, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I did find that the artists who submitted more than one work, and we were able to tell that you know, <coughs> these works go together or from the same body of work, the same artist. I did find myself spending more time with them and looking at connections and I found those to be the strong man. Often at times, the strongest is probably because I was able to relate to them more. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and it's hard in this process, you, you, in order to do it fairly, you shouldn't know those things because this way we're able to give awards to people who are one year out of school along with somebody who's been doing it for 50 years and they're on an equal playing field. When you give the massive resume, it can really color how you look at something. Um, and I, I really love Backstories once the art has been chosen. It might be fascinating to understand what is behind this. What, what's the story behind it? I, I, I think that if we look all around here, there are definitely some pieces that I'd love to know what is the backstory. That That's why the three of us were harassing people at the opening, like, oh, you <laughs> tell me about this. Yeah, I love yeah. this. How do you make this work? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a dimension to consider uh, once the art has been chosen to get to get those facts. Well, the artists are here, you can ask them. Yeah. Yeah. They all make their own. <laughs> okay. That's a question. Let's get little beeps. <laughs> so you're saying you, you didn't know that that was a painting, you thought it was a photograph from online. So you didn't get any information even about what the medium or anything was? Just by looking at it, we thought it was a photograph. But then when you sure, look at the medium, saying, no, we, we knew what the were, medium was. Oh, we, when we first looked at it, we all thought okay. it was a photograph, and so then we saw it was oil or okay. camera or whatever, and we're like, oh, wow. You know? Yeah, we had medium size and title. Okay. Yeah. And here, I think. I think, there, I, I think if there was here, because I remember thinking, like, I don't usually give a lot of credence to here, but in this case, like knowing if it came out of 2020 and 2021, like gave it a little bit of context. I don't know. Yes, we got size wrong. But I mean, you can concern can be big from the point of like, you want to keep it all secret or not? I mean, well, we weren't. <laughs> 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 Last year we had 52 pieces, we've gone up to 54, 56. This year we had to make it 48 um, because um, it's just something in the air right now where people want to create big works, which I'm excited about. Um, but that is something that um, we had to take into account as staff. So that would be added a bit. And um, not only service our work, but dimension matters when you're standing in front of it. I was trying to think, you know, is this thing, you know, teeny tiny, is it giant, because that's going to really, because right now they're all, you know, 11 inches square, I'm not, I might be reaching, that's another problem, because they all are apparently equal, uh, and, and they won't be because somebody here with me has done a shawl or somebody else, you know, sits in the front of the room, there's a difference in how you 
thing that we talked about is uh, there were a lot of larger pieces, something that I picked up whenever I was putting the show together. So there were a lot of natural pieces, either abstract or very realistic or a mix of both. Um, and I was wondering if there were any other through lines that you found throughout the artworks, you know, the ones that were accepted, the ones that may not have been. Uh, is there anything that you know you saw frequently? I, don't, I spent about six hours going through all the pieces and looking at 500 pieces in a, a row, 500, almost 600. It's hard to have, I, I don't know, I couldn't pick up any story like that. I knew, but I looked at them per category. Um, category being the type of art? Yeah, and paintings together. So some of it was surprising again, like, oh yeah, I did like that one, you know? Um, so I had a lot of those feelings. And, and then the ones that I did remember that, you know, with Julie's in this Wikipedia, I'm like, oh, I was excited about when we got in. And, and then I saw it in person and it stood up, you know, to what I thought it was going to be. That was kind of fun. I think overall it was a very happy, pleasant experience for me to see it for the first time. And, Exactly. But if an artist was coming from New York and didn't get accepted, they would have to come back yeah. from New York. 
That's one of the good things about yeah, it was quite as an artist being able to enter things differently because mm -hmm. you're not out packing it, driving it, picking it up. Um, mm -hmm. Did you know where the artists were from? No. Oh, yes. I was going to say, if the show has a very curated feel to it, I, you know, which is kind of interesting because it sounds like you guys just threw your, you know, your judgments into the, the scoring, and then the scores came out, and then that was the show. So if you, did you have an opportunity before it was hung to see who the end results were, where one of you could say, oh my god, no, 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 not that person, or hey, how did this person, you know, like where you could sort of wheel and deal and, you know, I'll like negotiate with each other to, for something that you love to get in or something that you didn't to get, to get out. So there was, yeah, well, we saw a PDF before of the all of um, the artists that accepted pieces. And but you didn't talk to each other. No. Okay. Until we made the contact of the, um, okay. the awards. Right. Which the award, that, yeah. that led to some like, why did you like that? Why do you think this is the best one? And mm -hmm. we had long conversations about the awards. Okay. That's why it was so difficult. Okay. Right. Is there, I mean, I think that there were some things that maybe some of us gave a very high score to that someone else gave maybe you know a medium score to and so there was discussions about well why did you give that one such a high score and it kind of had to bring each other along on some pieces and I think those discussions yielded some really interesting things. Yeah. Yeah, I love talking about art because it's like ESPN for art. And <laughs> Conversation. That's why I can't imagine us doing 500, even in two days, 500 pieces because we would have talked about stuff. Yeah. And, you know, we defended ones, like the record player was one that I, I really liked, and, and I don't know why I liked it, so it was hard for me to defend, but I was glad that it showed up there because it was such an oddball piece that it resonated with me. Did you purposely think about having so many pastels, having so many acrylics, so many um, sculptures, so many? I actually did when I so similar to I think the way both of you approached it. I uh, segregated. I like sorted by medium, and I did you know all the jewelry at one time and all the textiles at one time. So I felt like I was sort of comparing apples to apples. Mm -hmm. um, and then so I did kind of a first pass at that, and then um, after I completed a category, I went back and kind of looked at you know how the artist felt and recalibrated if. Needed to, and then after I did that for every medium, then I went back and I looked at the overall how everything fell. It's like if I was like super heavy on paintings and then needed to recalibrate on jewelry or whatever. So I did try to like make my very top scores reflect kind of the cross sectional entries. I did the same thing, which is um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to get dabbled by things, and you can have like a 97 point and then show, and then there's also like these amazing stats, you know. So Measure your own personal. Um, I'm a photographer, so I can't particularly say what I see. There's books because that's one of my first loves. Um, and it also is like you're looking at every kind of artwork. Um, so it, it takes some discipline, actually. Um, as artists, to you know your emotional, uh, initial emotional and emotional responses and things like that. Uh, what's fair? What's happening in the region? Uh, what are these people from 200 miles around the country are doing uh, in, in the aggregate? And I would say that uh, percentage-wise, we really do have a good representation of what's entered in. Um, I will say, you know, every jury is going to be different. And this time I did see that it's a little higher percentage on the ceramics, which I found really exciting and interesting, um, which is why we had to break out a lot of the pedestals and decide to go ahead and do basically a visual break for the ceramics between um, some of the two-dimensional works. So that was really interesting. Um, but a question that I have for you guys is um, what would be, since we have some uh, artists in the audience, uh, what would be your advice for artists that are going to be submitting to um, online juries or online shows? Yeah, have a good photograph. And look at, you can take it with your phone. I think you could take a good photograph with your phone, but look at it on a computer monitor before you uh, submit it and make sure that, and don't tinker with it too much in the photo editing, unless you can do that really well. <laughs> then a detail shot. And 
could have you know, made a, a, a hundred and fifty piece show and be just as fun as the last four works. And that's very helpful. Yeah, I mean, I would echo what you said, Chris, and <laughs> maximize whatever opportunity you're given to show off. So if you're allowed to upload three photographs per work, use all three. works maximize when you can submit three works um, and then to the point you made earlier if your work requires training um, that really will make or break a piece because when there's this many submissions you know there's a lot of gut instinct that goes into it and if you're just sort of initially turned off because the framing or the matting or whatever is not right um, you know that can that really does make or make or break a piece so. Right, yeah, I mean, that's even better. <laughs> I didn't understand, what did you say? What did you say? Take a picture without the frame, take, especially, you know, just of the piece itself, without the frame, yeah, the frame. If you notice, auction houses usually do that. They will say that it's framed, but they won't show you a picture of it framed, so that you can't be, you know, moved by the fact that the frame is really, really terrible, or dated, or, or whatever. And that yeah, it's part of the work, like, or I'll just put it in That's the true. <laughs> If any, either, I, I, there's pieces that I love that are repelled by with the frame. So I don't think framing gets us human to it, but it, it makes your work more pure. And even if it's good framing, I think it's at least for me, I, I've tried to ignore the frame as much as I could. Yeah. So can I ask a follow up on that? Because we were just considering that as, um, as all of the scores came in and we were looking at the results. <coughs> Many of the images didn't have frames, and then when they show up, some are strong frames and some are not. Um, is your preference as a juror to have everything to not have a frame, or because in, in my mind, I was thinking it would be nice if everything had a frame. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. To be consistent, so that you know you have a rule or a guideline. Either you have to show an image with a, in a frame, or you know only images not frame. No, I think artists need to learn how to best represent themselves. Uh, and I think some artworks are really beautiful on their own. You don't need it. You know, it works on paper often you can be uh, I mean that's just for the protection of the piece. Yeah, this has a frame that's a protection of the piece, but it's not really the story of the piece. Right. And, and you know, it's you know, like the position of using that as part of the piece, you know. Mm -hmm. I think colors how you the maple with that um, organic print is really lovely. It's really lovely. <coughs> um, I'm trying to think how that was submitted. I don't think it was. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was just the image. But it finished really, really nicely. I just remember in years gone by looking at things. It was done by an artist, and I think I see what people say. And it's a beautiful piece, but it's terribly framed. So you really like it, like you said. And what if they brought it in and it was really crazy? Was just you know, it really detracts, I know. So, it's still in? Oh, I, I, I work with students, but I'm really in school now. Um, I wouldn't do this again. <laughs> so, I, I couldn't get away with it, but I said, this is in, but you have to take it out of the screen when you're working. You need to have someone who's holding that. So, so what if you, you said you didn't see it with the frame? What if it came in and it was, <coughs> it didn't do the frame? It was a disaster. I don't know, actually. Can you say anything? Experience working in the gallery don't know how to frame their work well, and almost always in global terms, it's not a frame. <laughs> it's, so, it's so subjective because you know a lot of people we sell to hate wood, natural wood frames. They like the black frames. Some people hate black frames. I, I think doing it online gives you a, a shortcut around that because I know if we saw some pieces in person and they didn't have good framing, that would be. Frame the object, not like framing the object, not for the, the decor. So I often feel like when I'm framing things, that there's kind of one right choice. Um, so whether you like natural wood or you like black or whatever, for me it ultimately comes down to what does the piece justice. And it's 
usually when I'm working with fragrance, it's really pretty clear. You know, we might bat around like a couple different shades of maple, but we know that it needs to be you know, a maple frame. And so I feel like framing is it's a science and an art to some degree. And if you do it really well, you can do it really well. And a lot of times artists don't have the money to be able to afford to do that by themselves. Right. So it's better just to do that. To do that. I agree. Yeah, yeah framing sometimes is more expensive. Juror's perspective, just because of the way I, my process, I don't think I would have made the connection between somebody having submitted a pastel here and a ceramic there, and you know, textile work over here. So, from a juror's perspective, seeing three works in a row that clearly come from the same body of work made that work stronger for whatever reason. Um, so, I would say that you know, you pick it, pick it, the medium that you're trying to showcase to, or you know, it's the right fit for that venue and. And because of the process being um, as blind as possible, anyway, with the three of us have been around, and most of these artists have seen the process and they know it, so I, I think I know the way the way that it works. So it's also an opportunity to, because you're getting, you know, unvarnished feedback, to throw something out there that you're not known for. And I'm this pastel artist, I also want to do this thing. Well, throw it out there because you're going to get a response, and you may be surprised that that's the one that gets in and the things that you think are your sort of favorites um, don't. So it, it can be very exciting for an artist to get that um, feedback, but relatively you don't have a lot of response. But I, I, as myself, I was trying to throw in a cup as well when I was doing that, just to see like, I, I didn't think any of this had much chance to be there, so it was my chance to get a few rocks. Research the jurors too. I, I don't yes, think jurors know, but I don't know who the jurors are. Because I know some jurors don't even see ceramics is, even if it's submitted and presented really well, if they don't even see it, it doesn't make a connection to any kind of fine art or, um, you know, a piece of artwork where you can see it. A lot of applied arts are like fine graphic. But I think the three of us really, that's why I, would, I love seeing the pieces because we have applied arts, the weaving, we have um, ceramics, you know, found object pieces, and I think it represents a diversity of different materials and techniques. Is there an organization for jurors? Are you, are, is there a license or certification or anything? Just, or just, just your reputation? Mm -hmm. and experience. Mm -hmm. Are they willing to say yes when Julie calls you? Or <laughs> 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 other folks? <clears throat> How do you guys get selected and, and did you know each other? Say it shows like this uh, at the 
this organization that has a reputation as a good good theater and the quality here is really good. Um, I, I know as an artist I look at opportunities to show at a place where I want to be with my peers or people that are, you know, my people that are like better than me. Like I want I want to get in there. Uh, and that that sh this show already has that reputation. So um, that's a good thing. Yeah. I also think the process you advertised it or how you promoted it. Um, reached a lot of a diverse group of people because I was concerned with representing like a, a, just the way the work represent artists and um, when I went through the accepted artists again it was a racial diversity um, age diversity so um, one the Weaver is a student at CIA uh, faculty, faculty. Oh, recent grads but there are some students here and recent grads and that I was really happy about that because I. I, I trusted the reputation of Valley Arts Center to bring that in because I, I, I was concerned that we would show a, a, a bunch of work by career artists who have been through, you know, have worked in all the other shows. And I think we have an interesting representation of emerging artists, new artists, and some outsider artists too, which, you know, I, I think now is one of the most important ways to present art. And it, it doesn't happen by accident. It, uh, exclusion happens by accident by passive non-attendance to um, diversity or promoting diversity. Have all of you encouraged people to come see this show? Yes. Yeah, and I come from the West Side, so I would. Really you got your passport, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I came all the way from Summit County. Summit County. And I came from a long way. We pretty much covered Northeast Ohio. <laughs> to the artist if they want to include that in their CD or their bio, but there is no, there's no physical there's no there. That used to be, um, speaking of putting my museum hat on, a, a lot of older works that we had in the collection, the reason we knew where they were shown because on the back of a painting would be four or five different labels stapled to it, where it was in the Cleveland Museum of Art May show in 1947 and was also in a show at the Butler Museum of Art um, two years later. Sometimes that's the only place that stuff's known. And everything's digital now. Labels sort of get peeled off. So a lot of times that sort of natural way of, of recording things that was organic and analog, because we trust everything to be on computers anymore. And so um, I'm kind of a dinosaur in thinking that like things written down or written on the back of something is going to last on an object way longer than someone's computer program that you know blows up the next year. <laughs> But so. I will say there's some interesting technologies coming out now um, related to like NFTs and the blockchain that artists are starting to look at where um, there's like a chip that's applied to a canvas, for instance, that is um, sort of inextricably linked to the object. Um, and so all of that sort of ownership and provenance and exhibition history will sort of be in the blockchain. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. And no. <laughs> um, um, but there's some interesting technology coming coming out that is sort of addressing barcoding. that issue. Yeah, barcoding, but in a sort of new 21st century way. Yeah. 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 The only reason about art is a collector. It's very easy to start forgetting what year was it.
Well, I meant that the other two jurors chose that as well. They were pulled in by it. I didn't know the history <coughs> about it until I, or knew any even about the artist or anything until I saw it. I, mean, I met the artist the opening, but I read in the medium that she made handmade paper, which was then woven into a roll of paper that is now turned back into a, a, a roll of paper. Uh, and, and, you know, this artist gave herself multiple layers of textile work in order for us to think about paper weights um, and, and the value of paper, which everyone was like, sadly, you can't afford a paper weight. Um, and I just thought it was really brilliant. I love that sculpture. I just hope we can see it installed in some of the buildings. I can't believe more of this has a sculpture than this. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, it's unbelievable. Very beautiful. Beautiful. Artist who is here, would the artist like to say anything else about the work? Sure. She is. Oh, there she, she is. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were hiding behind the person in front of me. I was like, is that you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Can I touch the piece? Please. Yeah. Please. It's do. yours. You are the one person. <laughs> it was funny on opening night. There was a guy I was telling a story that he was really looked angry and he was on his cell phone and he was pacing around and he went up to this and he went <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing. He fixed it for you. It was like I'm home and I'm mad and I'm gonna fix the damn thing. <laughs> so yeah I mean I mean this is my name Paul Dam. And this is um, this is actually um, I did not make this paper. Okay. This was um, although I've made a ton of paper since then. But I took um, Kozo paper, which is made from the paper mulberry uh, from a mulberry tree, um, and I cut it and spun it on a spinning wheel. And then um, it has pins in it so that it doesn't unroll, it sort of spontaneously combusts periodically, like that. So, um, yeah, and then it's on a paper towel roll. Um, I did, yeah, it was like, of course, of course I should make it. So, yes, it, so it was woven on a floor loom, and a lot of my work is, oh, and it also has select a size. I, I was noticing it's like, that's yeah. a great detail. Oh, my goodness. Never would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing that guy didn't know that. He might have thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So anyway, um, I also sort of, it was sort of tongue in cheek. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, yeah. And I'm thinking about making toilet paper sometime. I have found some really wonderful white plastic <laughs> to spin. Mm. And um, I'm thinking about toilet paper. So yeah, I'm a spinner and weaver, and and I tend to make things that are very realistic. Do you remember how you photographed that? How they were? Just I I hung it on. Um, <laughs> you really want to know? Yeah, because I, I, it, it, this one would have been lost if it wasn't. For it was yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> terrible. I I hung it on. Um, I drilled a hole in the fence in my backyard with good light. And I took a photography class, so I know how to take pictures of my pieces. And then I um, hung it on the fence and I put a white background behind it, mm -hmm. and it turned out really beautifully. Um, I was surprised. I mean, because because one of my big failings in, in, in entering shows, especially when they put the pictures in the catalogs, is they look crappy. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got these beautifully photographed pieces, and there's my cell phone picture. Well, I think that photograph represented the humor, conveyed that humor and yeah. charisma about the piece. I think. And you, you took the time to to detail the medium, so we kind of understood what it was we were looking at, and yeah, it was very well done. Where did the folder come from? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> this I spent a Found long. Objects, I, I read, I spent a long time, and then I was really afraid that you wouldn't hang it because it it, it has to it really needs mollies in the wall, and I thought, oh, they're not gonna hang it. Oh, no. Whatever the challenge. 
So yes, you two can, and they have a toilet paper roll hanger, just like that. So it'll be a series. So you too can buy that on Amazon. <laughs> Um, so I, you guys said that you have done, um, like you've juried shows before. Um, I was wondering if you ever take into consideration the location that you're jurying for, um, and like, do you apply that to how you judge the images? I guess it depends on the place. I, I've, I've juried places where it has sort of members or just from, from that town, and they want, they tell you that they want to take them to that town. You know, so everything I've done is start counting while I'm down at the Madison Museum. Uh, and, and our charge was to sort of show everything that was going on. So we, sh we showed some things that weren't like the best, but we're showing I I submitted two. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they were both really strong. I, it was it was a hard choice, like which one you're gonna choose is really hard. Yeah. yeah. Well I just say you're talking about biases and drawbacks, but I think we can all agree that together you guys did an amazing work. So thank you so much. For
Okay, yeah. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a performance piece of that, so I think she's back. <laughs> so thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, there's still plenty of food and drink, so please.